a devotion for the third Sunday after Easter. The Gospel is from the 16th chapter of St. John, beginning with the 16th verse. A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of his disciples said among themselves, What is this that he says to us, A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I go to the Father? They said, therefore, What is this that he says, A little while? We do not know what he is saying. Now Jesus knew that they desired to ask him, and he said to them, Are you inquiring among yourselves about what I said, a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Most assuredly I say to you, that you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. And you will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in labor, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she has given birth to the child, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that a human being has been born into the world. Therefore, you now have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart will rejoice, and your joy no one will take from you. And in that day, you will ask me nothing. Thus far our text. Our Lord Jesus Christ spoke these words at the Last Supper, before he was delivered up to be crucified. He tells his disciples plainly that they will weep. But the world will rejoice, because the world wants the opposite of what the church wants. So it was that when the Christ was in the tomb, the church wept, while the world rejoiced. When the Christ rose again, the church rejoiced, and the world panicked. This is how it will be until the resurrection of the dead. The church and the world are enemies of one another, hating what the other loves. The church loves truth and life. The world loves death and lies. For this reason, the church, whose members live in the world, suffer all kinds of distress at the hands of the world. But she will have the final victory, because just as our Lord Jesus Christ has risen from the dead, so he will come again in glory, and we will rejoice forever, while those of the world will weep forever. In response to this, we must ask God for patience in suffering and for wisdom. It is contrary to our human way of thinking to give thanks for adversity. But every adversity is a reminder that our Lord is coming. The disciples wept when Christ was in the tomb, but in truth this was for their good that Christ may win the victory over sin and death. Therefore, we ask God for wisdom, that we may rejoice in all adversity, remembering his resurrection. We also pray that God would deliver us from adversity, according to his wisdom. If we ask God to deliver us, we confess him to be our only help and deliverer. More than this, we should pray that God deliver us from sin. For temptations are often far greater in the midst of sorrow, especially the temptations to despair or to trust in false saviors. But Christ has won the victory over sorrow by his resurrection. We must also give thanks to God for the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without his sorrow, we would sorrow in hell forever. But now, because of his sorrow, and because of his resurrection, we learn to give thanks to God for our own sorrows, in that 
we become images of our Lord Jesus Christ to the world. For he was sorrowful and died and rose again for our deliverance. When the world rejoices, we weep. For the world hates us as it hated Christ. Therefore, the world rejoices in its own destruction, rejoicing in the sins with which it destroys itself. But we weep for ourselves and for the souls of those thus being destroyed. Meanwhile, we, we rejoice in the means of grace and in the gospel message of our Lord's resurrection. Though the world weeps at this message. What we want and what the world wants are completely at odds with one another. But on the last day, when the Christ comes again, those who trust in him will rejoice forever. But those who delighted in sin will weep forever, because they rejected their Savior. Amen. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We pray. Almighty God, who showest to them that be in error the light of thy truth, to the intent that they may return into the way of righteousness, grant unto all them that are admitted into the fellowship of Christ's religion, that they may avoid those things that are contrary to their profession, and follow all such things as are agreeable to the same. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Amen.